Coming up in today's video, I make Elon Musk a sandwich, we look at reason 420 as to why legacy automotive companies are going bankrupt, but the star of the show, a Tesla Model Y gets assembled in just minutes. Check this out. No need fast enough to put these two parts. Put it on its side and install the insulation without any fastener. So you just snap in. Snap fit. It's snap fit. So you just... And there you go, one person. Usually it takes two people, one on each side to do and that's all. Yeah. We have assembled the car. It's shockingly simple, yet obvious and brilliant all at once. This is incredible innovative engineering, yet most people have no idea what Tesla are doing. Whether you're an engineer or just a fan of building Lego, watch this video and note the simplicity of putting together a Texas-made Model Y. It would take most people longer to build an IKEA wardrobe than to build the front and rear end of a Tesla. Here's my supercut of an engineering masterclass. You can notice the giga casting here, so it's only one, one uh, big piece of giga casting. So the operator can go inside, start uh, assembly the vehicle from uh, the inside and go toward the exterior. So here we have the coal, but it's also the water box. There is two parts in one. So they eliminated complexity with one part less on the vehicle. We have the cooling beam, so with all the uh, elements, components for the cooling system, except the radiator. So you have uh, the accumulator, condenser, compressor, octavalve here. So this is a complete uh, cooling system. This beam is uh, common on the different models of Tesla, so they use exactly the same beam with a, a small modification from one uh, version to another. The, all the bolts here in this area from the top down are vertical, so it's easy for the operator to uh, put the, the bolts. And, and do you think that this could be done by robots in the future? Maybe, yes. They're coming. Here, we can have uh, uh, pokayoke. No, not hokey pokey pokayoke. It's a Japanese term that means mistake proofing or error prevention. A pokayoke is a mechanism in a process that helps equipment operators avoid mistakes and defects by preventing, correcting, or drawing attention to human errors as they occur. Thanks, Wikipedia. Here we can have a, a pokayoke for the AC connections. So you cannot reverse the part. So it's always in the correct position. And for five pipes, you only have two fasteners. So yeah. the operator, even if it's the first day of job, they cannot mix it up. So the filter is two parts. But again, you don't no need fastener to put these two parts. They just snap together. You just snap together. And uh, uh, if you notice, this part will lay on the cooling beam, so it will never f fall down. So again, the front frame, you just put it on its side. So you have a C-shaped part here that can keep and hold the uh, front frame. It holds it in place, from, so from, once you get yeah, it from, into from the module. slots, yes. they just stay there. Yes, exactly. The radiator is horizontal, it's not vertical. Just one part of that. Because the radiator is horizontal, you have a lot of space here, and it's a nice thing to give to the customer extra space for storage. The idea of traditional automakers is uh, to uh, take out the thermal engine and put uh, electric system. Tesla is uh, because they don't have uh, this uh, legacy of uh, thermal engine, so they try to rethink assembly and you conceive the vehicle. So you have a giga casting in the back, you shaped giga casting. Again, the operator can start from the inside, going from going out. So giga casting is expensive part. So they try to use it at the maximum. They put some uh, reference so you can, in fact, install the insulation without any fastener. It so just, you just uh, fits right fits into place. In the place. Again, the same for this part. So you just snap in. Snap That's in. All. Yes. No fastener. No fastener. It's an aluminum cable, so uh, it's uh, uh, lighter. But uh, the most important thing is that aluminum is much more cheaper than uh, copper. Yeah. 
There's no loose wires. It just no. goes exactly yes. where it's supposed to they, go. They look for rigidity. So tomorrow, if they need to automatize the operation, it will be easier. Do it with a robot. Yes, exactly. So this part, just to close. It snap fit. It snap fit. We have the uh, container here. So just put inside. The shape take care that uh, is aligned. You put the four fastener and that's all. And again, the bolts come in from the top very easy yes, to do. Yes, exactly. And the same for the insulation. Crash beam. So there is a, a also Pocayoke here. You save uh, one and two fasteners. So instead of three bolts, or four oh, bolts, four bolts you have three. three. Yes. But they pokayoke it so it only yes. goes in the, the right you, way. I cannot reverse it. No. Okay, it will not fit. These are the only horizontal uh, bolts that we can find in, in the back. So we have the rear fascia. It's very light. You have only one connection here. And if you want, I can also put it on. And there you go, one person. Usually it takes two people, one on each side to do it. And that's all. Yeah. We have assembled the car. The tail lights, again, you just feed it. You have two fasteners in the back here. It's coupled with the tail light for, for, for the, the charging charge port. Point. So is a, there is an actuator that's okay. Only one. Uh, Part, so complexity reduction again. So they are looking for complexity reduction, modularity, and reducing the number of parts, the brackets and fasteners in order for the operator to be faster in the assembly of the car. You have less part, less complexity, and quicker assembly of the car. Tesla is revolutionizing how cars are designed. Each individual part is designed for manufacturing and assembly in the simplest way possible. Each component is literally idiot-proof to assemble. How easy was it to fit components while stood directly next to them? No awkward fixings from beneath, no fiddly fasteners whilst leaning over anything. Each part we just saw has been designed to reduce complexity to allow for quicker, simpler, cheaper assembly times, less manufacturing costs, fewer things to go wrong. It is by far the most efficient, optimised way to currently put a car together and really highlights just how brilliant Tesla engineers are. Their manufacturing and assembly is on a whole other level when compared to typical legacy auto stagnancy. Over and over in manufacturing, the tendency is to complicate things. To remedy this, Elon came up with one of his many mantras, the best part is no part. The best process is no process. It weighs nothing, costs nothing, can't go wrong. This very accurately sums up what Tesla continues to do and strive for every day. Undesigning is the goal, deleting complexity wherever possible. Elon has said, if you're not adding things back in at, at least 10% of the time, you're clearly not deleting enough. Oh, hi Elon, come in. Uh, I'll make you a sandwich. Cheese or ham? This is one of the great questions in physics and philosophy. Don't overthink it. It's just a sandwich. You know what? I'll use both. The best part is no part. I'll remove the ham then. The best process is no process. Removing the cheese. Dude, you're going to go hungry. Let me add just 10% back in. I'll delete it. Delete. You know what? How dare you criticize my sandwich? Get out! My sandwich! My sandwich! I don't think I'd last two minutes working for Elon. Anyway, back to the point. When Sandy Munro first tore down a Tesla, it's fair to say that he was not so impressed with how it was built. With obvious panel gaps, hundreds of unnecessary parts and processes, and without decades of experience in building cars, Tesla understood there was much to do to improve their car building process drive down costs and streamline assembly. And flip me have they done that. Tesla have catapulted themselves to industry leaders in manufacturing in record time. Remember a few years ago, Volkswagen admitted it took them 30 hours to build an ID3, compared to Tesla's 10 hours to build a Model Y. Where might that stand today? Maybe gone from three, four, five times quicker to build a Model Y now compared to that of a supposed industry leading car company? And I think it's fair to say that Tesla's panel gaps have improved no end in recent years. And something that, quite frankly, no one even paid attention to before Tesla came along. I certainly couldn't care less about micro-millimetre tolerances between body panels when considering the real value a Tesla gives me, but that's just me. Are you triggered by panel gaps? Let me know in the comments below, and do like and subscribe to help this little channel grow. Oh, it rhymes. Thanks a bunch. 
This is how Tesla will build their EVs to scale, to meet that 20 million vehicles a year goal and meet future demand. By pumping out cars at record-breaking speed and at a cost-saving advantage no one else can touch, this gives Tesla the extreme profit margins plus ability to continually lower purchase prices. Tesla is so far ahead of any other automaker in terms of engineering and manufacturing, it's quite frankly embarrassing at this point. It's difficult to convey just how many advantages Tesla now has from this modular assembly demonstration, ongoing cost savings of deleting parts and processes, re-engineering components to be single parts instead of multiple parts, the best example of which being a giga casting, which has eliminated hundreds of individual parts, but is now just a single piece casting, which allows components to connect easily to it, or even just drop straight into position. The reason legacy automakers are hesitant to use giga castings is because they have traditional stamping presses, all bought and paid for. Why change? The advantages are beyond obvious, but it does require expensive investments and disruption within the factories. Like everything in life, just stick to what you know, it's easier that way. This is the very reason stunning concept cars don't get built, or at best just get watered down into another generic blob of metal. Innovation is expensive, but so too is complacency. Tesla's highly streamlined approach to building cars is also taken to build Tesla factories in the most efficient way possible. From deleting hundreds of factory floor robots thanks to the Gigapress, to deleting the entire paint shop for a Cybertruck. As Tesla sprints into a rapid innovation frenzy future, it won't be long before all current and future Tesla factories will be efficiently pumping out millions of vehicles per year, and will do so to the amazement of the current auto industry, Wall Street analysts, and let's be honest, the vast majority of humans who don't even know what a Tesla is yet. Legacy auto companies have had a hundred year head start towards innovating like this, but have squandered that opportunity in favour of short term profits and an easy life. Rest in peace, you lazy, short-sighted laggards. Yes, that's a little rude, but it also happens to be true. Former Volkswagen CEO Herbert Diess tried to aggressively switch to EVs before being let go. Jim Farley has now eventually seen the writing on the wall for Ford's future and is doing all he can to separate the ICE business from the EV business, knowing full well that only one will survive. But other CEOs have stubbornly failed to recognise the EV disruption to come, and rather than moving towards the obvious EV revolution and becoming industry leaders in the field once more, they will instead have the weight of imminent bankruptcy and thousands of redundancies on their shoulders. But just like the bankers of the 2008 crash, no doubt these CEOs and directors will still leave with a healthy bank balance and pass blame on to others. Well, who could have seen this coming? You know, we weren't to know that electric vehicles were the future. If there's any hope of survival at this point, there isn't. Automotive companies should be forcing their engineers to watch this Model Y assembly video like this, and frantically designing new electric cars from the ground up, as I've said in the past in countless videos. For goodness sake, just copy Tesla! But they can't, because these car companies don't have the ability to even make their own car parts, let alone redesign them. Disruptive innovation is expensive. So when these cumbersome car companies just consider doing something slightly innovative and different, I don't know, let's say by adding a giant screen, making their own software, removing tons of useless buttons, or by compacting all thermal gubbings into a single cooling beam, which allows for an additional storage area, as well as extra crumple zone in the event of a collision, genius! But all these little changes require car companies to change direction, become vertically integrated, and design and build their own parts like Tesla does. But in reality, it's not happening! You've got more chance of teaching a goldfish how to play the drums, or finding a fart in a jacuzzi. It's just too little too late at this point. It's my prediction that these car companies will be bankrupt by the decade's end. For so many different reasons now, it's beyond obvious. To watch this Model Y being assembled so swiftly and easily with just one guy, with parts just slotting, dropping or snapping into place, with zero ability of cocking it up, having fixings in such easy to reach places and using parts with commonalities across all Tesla models is just astonishingly efficient, a real testament to Tesla engineering. But this is just today's Model Y assembly process. Remember the next generation platform that was announced at Investor Day? Yeah, this one that Tesla described as their unbox process of building cars, where robots will be able to work in each section before a single final assembly. This will result in further orders of magnitude efficiencies that legacy automotive companies could have done, but have simply ignored. They will never be able to catch up to Tesla's engineering genius, as Tesla will continue to out-innovate, outsmart, and outperform every other car company on earth. What car companies are going to be left at this rate? You tell me who's innovating at anywhere near this rate. 
let alone having more than a sliver of profitability. And if I see any comments below about just wait till Apple release their car or the future's hydrogen, Toyota told me so, I think I'll explode. So thanks to the presenter of this assembly demonstration, Han Min, who is business developer for Caresoft. And that's not a washing up liquid company, but Caresoft are leaders in global engineering, research and development. The chap asking the questions is John McElroy of Autoline, who's been described as an influential thought leader in the automotive industry. He really is one of the all-time greats of the auto world, so, you know, respect. See the link in the description below to find out more about these companies and to watch the full video. But until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do like, subscribe and hit that bell to be warned of new videos from me. And if you're in no rush, check out my other videos just here and here. There's all sorts on my channel now. I'm having a lot of fun making these videos and I hope you get some value from them too. Do let me know your thoughts. I read all the comments and respond to the ones I understand. I'm Will, this is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.